Welcome, this is going to be a review of energy. We're going to be talking about ATP and ADP, photosynthesis, and cellular respiration. As we progress through this, the information that is discussed in here will also be found in the questions that you were provided on the study guide. Feel free to make any changes to those questions that you would like or additions as needed. First thing I wanted to touch base on was ATP and ADP. As we can see on the screen right here, ATP has three phosphates or is a triphosphate. ADP has two phosphates. It is a diphosphate. ATP is what our bodies use to release energy. So this has stored energy that is capable of being released. That energy is stored within the bond right between the second and third phosphate. When this is released, this third phosphate, energy stored in this bond, it is released and it is used for cellular function. What is left after this goes away is ADP. Notice it only has two phosphates. It is capable of storing energy. So ATP can release energy, ADP can store energy. This image kind of shows us that uh, process I was just describing. Here we have ATP as the three phosphates. When we release this phosphate, this third phosphate, energy is released. It's used for cellular function. That energy was stored in the bond between those two phosphates. What's left after this phosphate is le uh, released is this molecule here, ADP, two phosphates. It can store energy. How do we store energy? We add some energy, add a phosphate, this energy goes into this th uh, bond right here between these two. So that is the relationship between ADP and ADP. The next topic is photosynthesis. Let's start by looking at the equation. Uh, it is 6CO2 plus 6H2O arrow or will produce or will make glucose, C6H12O6, and oxygen. When we look at this equation, we can see that there's an arrow and that there are two sides, before the arrow and after the arrow. The um, items that come before the arrow, those are called the reactants. These will react together or mix together in this reaction. The uh, items on the uh, right side of the arrow or after the arrow, these are the products. As a result of these reacting together, these products are produced. Recall that photosynthesis takes place inside the chloroplast, which is this large structure on our screen here, that is found within uh, plant cells. Recall that within the chloroplast there are a couple different structures. There's the granum, which are these structures here, kind of a stack of pancakes, and one individual pancake within the granum is known as a thylakoid. Thylakoids contain chlorophyll which can absorb the sunlight as it goes in. Recall that photosynthesis uses energy from sunlight in order to give it energy so it can, it can do its job. There's also the stroma. The stroma is the fluid that's out surrounding all the granum and thylakoids. So let's look at the process of photosynthesis. There are uh, two parts to this reaction. There's the light dependent reactions. There's the light independent reactions. We call the light independent reactions the Calvin cycle in class. Now the light dependent reactions, they happen first. They require sunlight. When sunlight strikes the thylakoid, chlorophyll absorbs that energy. Once the energy is absorbed, that energy is used to break apart these six molecules of water into oxygen and the hydrogens. The hydrogens we don't see in this picture, but they are reoccurring right down here in this molecule of glucose. So the uh, water is bro broken into uh, oxygen and hydrogen. Um, once this has happened, ADP is transformed into ATP. And that's this molecule that we see here. This is actually ATP. This ATP, capable of releasing energy, travels out of the thylakoid and into the stroma. In the stroma, there is no 
um, chlorophyll, so it cannot capture energy from sunlight, hence the need for ATP. ATP will uh, enter the Calvin cycle and break apart carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide um, is used to build this molecule over here, C6H12O6, which we call glucose. This would be food for the plant. Also recall that as ATP releases energy, ADP is formed. ADP would go back up here to the light-dependent reactions to, uh, be form, uh, to be turned into more ATP so the process can continue. Recall that it is only plants, not animals, that have uh, chloroplasts. Um, plants have these because they don't have mouths. They cannot get sugar from eating. We can. So plants do have this. They also have mitochondria. Mitochondria will be used to break apart this glucose that's made from the um, chloroplast so that plants have uh, energy as well. So the next thing we're going to look at is cellular respiration. Here's a chemical equation for cellular respiration. Uh, we can see that glucose that was just made from the chloroplast is a, um, a reactant in this process. It reacts with oxygen to produce these two products, carbon dioxide and water. So here we see the mitochondria. This is found in both plant and animal cells. Um, this is where cellular respiration takes place. Um, let's start by looking at um, these two stages, the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. The Krebs cycle happens first, um, but before the Krebs cycle we have glycolysis. Recall glycolysis is taking that glucose and breaking it into um, two three carbon chains. These three carbon chains we called pyruvates earlier in the year. Anyhow, the pyruvates, they enter the mitochondria, specifically the matrix, and the pyruvates are broken apart and um, transformed. Some of them are used to um, make this carbon dioxide we see over here. As a result of the breaking apart of these pyruvates, electrons from these molecules are released. Those electrons is this energy that we see right here and it is why this is called the electron transport chain. These electrons with energy are used down here in the second stage. The electrons provide the energy to take this oxygen and transform it into water as well as a large amount of ATP. One glucose comes in and roughly 36 to 38 molecules of ATP, depending on efficiency, are produced, along with carbon dioxide and water.